an event celebrating International Women's Day organized by Next Gen Sri Lanka in partnership with the Friedrich Nauman Foundation for Freedom. I won Subha Sandhyavak Sambhavani Amuttan Samata. Jati Antara Kanta Dinia Nimiti Karagana, Sangvidane Vu, Sui Sheshi Eilid Sandhyave, Samarambe Sanituhan Karanatai, Upper Sudanam Vanni. Well, ladies and gentlemen, on that very graceful, exquisite, and soulful note, a very warm welcome to each of you to I Lead, an event celebrating International Women's Day organized for you by Next Gen Sri Lanka in partnership with the Friedrich Nauman Foundation for Freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, after the success of last year's event, which was I Lead Chapter One, this year, we're thrilled to be back again with I Lead Chapter 2, where we have with us eight highly accomplished women from diverse industries coming together to share their leadership perspectives on Sri Lanka. I won Subha Sandhyavak, Garujan Amadi Amadi Duman, Dallas Allah Peruma Amadi Duman Pramuka, Vivida Deshapana Paksha Niyojane Karana, Vyapara Shestra Niyojane Karana, Madhya Ayatana Niyojane Karana, Siyalu Madana Aitamatma Gaurven Napa, I lead the Vanadira Sandha, me Mohote di Piliganu Labanoa, Jati Antara Kanta Adinia Nimitten Pavatwina, me Sui Sheshi Vedasatahane, Devana Adira Ime Resakriyat Makavane, Pasugi Vasarit, me Venima Kati Uttak Siduna, Kanta Vakere Mangita Ne, me Kali, Gruhania Mava Kiename Bumikavin Obatagos, Sielu Shestravela, Hini Petatamalagavin at Samatu Itamatma, Shakti Matkinik. Pirimiaha, Purusha Parshave has Samanova, Kantava, Tamange Shestri other, Itamatma Ihalin Vajabinavasta, Ape Ratatulama, Apata Dakin at Labenoa. Even he Kantava and Atadinaku Samagin, other Minit to Ataka di Apakatakran at Sudanam, Kantavagi, Shakti Pilibadu. It matte Nabasudanam, Pasugi, Vasar, Pilibadava, Keti, Matakiri, Maxi Dukaraganat. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, as we commence this year's edition, let's start off by taking a look at a glimpse of last year's edition, which is I Lead Chapter 1. So we invite you to turn your attention to the screen as we take a look. I Lead Chapter 1 featured 10 women from diverse spheres of influence, speaking for 10 minutes on what they would do if they were to lead the country. They spoke about some long-delayed reforms in many sectors in Sri Lanka and encourage the policy makers to think differently on issues concerning the country's future. Their ideas were a breath of fresh air to the audience. The event also highlighted the leadership perspectives Sri Lanka has been missing out on for many decades due to inadequate female representation in national politics. The speakers featured in the first chapter of I Lead were Kasturi Chellaraj Wilson, the group CEO of the Hamas conglomerate, Varuni Amunugama, the joint managing director of the Triad Group, Dr. Santoshya Fernando, a public health specialist and the deputy director of the Sri Javadnarpura Hospital, Sarah Kabir, a peace building and reconciliation researcher and activist who is also an author, Sriani Kulawansa, a former Olympic qualified athlete, Nilshani De Silva, a differently able teacher and motivational speaker. Professor Janita Leonage, the vice chairperson of the University Grants Commission. Amina Hussein, a sociologist and author. And Samadani Kirivandenia, the former chairperson of the Sanasa Bank. Today, we unveil the second chapter of I Lead, which will feature eight more prominent women from eight different backgrounds who will share their views on the same topic. What I will do differently if I ever get the chance to lead the country. A little glimpse into what was in store last year, setting the tone for yet another very interesting and thought-provoking discussion this year as well for I Lead Chapter 2. 
Now, the very outset, ladies and gentlemen, let's inform you that International Women's Day, which is commemorated every year on March 8th, is a global day to celebrate the social, the political, the economic, the cultural achievements of our powerful women. And we have with us in the room today one fantastic group of high-achieving and pioneering and trailblazing ladies with us. And we're so delighted to welcome you all to today's function. Now, the Women's Day also marks a call to action for accelerating women's equality. The theme for International Women's Day 2022 is Gender Equality Today for a Sustainable Tomorrow. And I'm sure all of us here agree that when we have a gender equal world, then we have a stronger world. When we have a world that is free of bias, of stereotypes, of discrimination, then we have a more powerful world. And when we have a world that celebrates women's achievements and values women's strengths, then we have a world that is more vibrant. So ladies and gentlemen, this Women's Day, we take this opportunity to remind ourselves and the world around us that collectively we can all break the bias and together we can take action for equality. සෑම වසරකම මාර්තු මාසයේ 8 වෙනිදා ජාත්‍යන්තර කාන්තා දිනෙන් නිල වශයෙන් සැමරෙන දවස ශ්‍රී ලංකාව තුළ විතරක් නෙවෙයි ජාත්‍යන්තරයේ පවා කාන්තාවන් අගයමින් කාන්තාවන්ගේ ශ්‍රේෂ්ඨත්වය සැලකිලට ගනිමින් මේ දිනය විවිධාකාරයෙන් සම්බරණ ලබනවා ක්‍රිස්මස් සඳහන් කළ විදිහට අද දවසේ මෙවර ජාත්‍යන්තර තේමාව වී තිබෙන්නේ break the bias එහෙම නැත්නම් පක්ෂපාතිත්වයේ බිඳිමු කාන්තා පිරිමි බේදයකින් තොරව අපි නිසි තැන සම තැන කාන්තාවන්ට ලබා දෙමු කියන තේමාව යටතේ ජාත්‍යන්තර තේමාව සනිටුහන් කරන්නට මා කැමතියි. ඒ වගේම ශ්‍රී ලංකාව තුළ අද දවසේ අප රටකි දැයකි ලොවකි ඇය කියන තේමාව යටතේ තමයි මෙවර 2022 මාර්තු මාස 8 වෙනිදා ජාත්‍යන්තර කාන්තා දිනය සමරන්නට සූදානම් වී සිටින්නේ. This evening, ladies and gentlemen, we are delighted that we are joined by eight high-achieving women who will help us in a discussion to talk about the prospects and the possibilities of a brighter future for women in our country. And at the very outset, before we begin with our proceedings, it's my pleasure to inform you that this event's uh, this evening's event has been organized by NextGen Sri Lanka in partnership with the Friedrich Nauman Foundation for Freedom. And we do hope that our gathering here today will inspire a very thought-provoking conversation on how we may be able to ensure gender equality in Sri Lanka. Jatyantra Kanta Dine Nimitin, Ada Davase Me Sangvidane, Me Katiuta Sangvidane Kirti Bene. Nidhasa Sadhahu Frederick Nauman Padaram Saha, next gen Sri Lanka Sangvidane Equa. It in Ada Davase di Kanta van Atta Denek, Minitu Atakadi. Taman to me rata palane kirimata, me heavy metavasta vaklaba do not Taman monoada, Vinaskarane, Taman kohuma the me rata palane karane in a carane, Vivi the shares travel a hini pet at Malanga ukanta, but at the nick, minute to attack the katakaranata, Balapurtuino. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, we're delighted to officially commence I Lead Chapter 2. And to now do the honors of the welcome address, please join us in inviting on stage the head of the Sri Lanka and Bangladesh Office for the Friedrich Nauman Foundation for Freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Wolfgang Heinzer. Your Excellency um, Minister of Mass Media, Dulas Alahapuruma, members of the opposition, honorable guests, representatives of the diplomatic community, uh, and also the representatives of the German institutions, the Goethe Institute, the GIZ, and of course also the Chamber. Dear friends of the media, dear partners, dear friends, Dear all women and men, first of all, I'd like to thank Next Gen Sri Lanka and of course my colleagues for organizing this event. I'm very happy that we are now at ILEAD Chapter 2 
and uh, it really speaks for our good cooperation and partnership that we you know have another chapter and hopefully build on this i always it's always a bit of dread and and also a bit of happiness when i when i look at uh, international women's day um, because i always look back and all the achievements the women's rights that have been made possible but you always look and you realize that basically you know there's still some way to go so today we celebrate international women's day and i think we should really keep in mind that while we celebrate it on 8th of march every year we should actually you know look back at this and and see that every day is a women's day every day women help society grow there's the old saying that women are actually the architects of society because women build families women build communities and women build societies so it's actually every day that's uh, women's day we you know every year we celebrate it with huge enthusiasm you know we we celebrate people from different or women from different fields of of life political economical um you know from the media and in all kinds of and fields of life and i'm very very happy that we have these eight speakers here and i'm very much looking forward to what they are going to say um but we you know also see that wherever women engage wherever they work be it at home um be it on in the office we see that they excel and they do a great job they excel and they exceed expectations and very often you know men do it one way but very often i'm i'm quite amazed on how smooth women can can achieve things and uh, my hats off to to all of you women for for being able to do that um international women's day was created to put forward and express an idea to the world that this day was aimed to create changes in the mindset of the world to create a positive impact on the world and you know there is also a need to celebrate women's day because still too often women are subjected to preconceived perceptions on what they can or cannot do what they you know sh how they should or shouldn't act what they should want and even you know what women should think and you know this kind of biased behavior of people really needs to be reflected not only on international women's day but every day because every day is a women's day and we should really look at all these difficulties that uh, internationally we are all facing when we look at education when we look at harassment sexual harassment you know this pandemic we looked at um domestic violence we looked at sexual abuse and unfortunately you know different horrors still exists uh children marrying at a too young age illegal trafficking female genocides and and other issues that we we need to look at we need to address and we need to solve and then of course there are things like different pay you know according to gender which is uh, also quite surprising for me that we still have that um because it's never about you know gender it's always about what can you achieve what potential you have and that is what should be important hopefully in our society so when we look at you know how how women can achieve what they can do sometimes also in a different way but very much very efficient uh, i believe that you know we should use this international day for us all to show appreciation respect and love for all these incredible women out there 
we should also think about the respect that we have for our mothers, for our sisters, for our daughters, and that we should all realize that not only them, but other women should also be seen in the same light because they are all mothers, they are all daughters, they are all sisters, and they command the same respect. So let's create a world for all women. And let's create a world where one day all of our children are not judged by their gender, but by the potential they have and by their achievements. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Mr. Wolfgang Heinzer for those opening remarks, setting the stage for the very interesting perspectives we can expect over the course of this evening. And as Mr. Wolfgang also mentioned, every day is Women's Day, and I'm sure all of us here echo his sentiments because women need to be celebrated every single day of the year for all the good that they do from the home front to the workplace and every other place in between. I'm sure we all know that the world is a better space because of the strength, the wisdom, and the brilliance of women. Ape Gauravani Stutia, Nidha Sandhavu, Fedrik Nauman Padanimi, Sri Lanka, Vasaha, Bangladesh, Sandhavu Pradhani, Wolfgang Hans Mahatata, Etuman Sandhahan Kala Akareta, Sam Diniak Makanta, Diniak Vayutui, Kanta Vakane, Paula Kina Punchi Kutumben, Aram Bakalut, Suishe Shima Stania, Himivana Kenik, Ada Vartamani Vanavita, Siluva Pakshavala, Emanatam Shastravala, Kala Shastregata, Krida Vagata, Deshpal Negata, Bohotangala, Kanta. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now our pleasure to have the opportunity to hear a few remarks talking about the objective as well as the importance of an event such as this. And we're happy to hear from the co-convener of Next Gen Sri Lanka. So to share his thoughts with us here this evening, please welcome on stage Rasika Jayakodi. Let's put our hands together for him. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I consider it a great privilege and honor to deliver my opening remarks at this great session where eight high achieving ladies will share their leadership perspectives for Sri Lanka. Since I believe the majority of our speakers will share their ideas in English, I will switch to Singhala to deliver the rest of my remarks. Mama me Vedisatahani Ape Ara Dityan game Bahutarak Mamahitano Ingrisi Basha and Taman Gadhas Dakwai Kiela, Enisa, Mama Singhala Tamaru and Nam, Magi Tri Adhas, Visheshame Aime Kapikaran Niki and Eka, Obata Pahadilikaran. Lankawe Desha Pal Nekiani Sudu Pityak. Lankawe Minisu Desha Pal Nekil Androgani may Balayas and the Hakarana Sudu. Ethering had me pretty patti sampa, the near Lukuluku Venas Kam Karaneka, Naga taken a deck mak tinek, Minisu Desha Pal Nikola Terum Ganime, Balayas and the Hakarna Sudu Etakota, May Sudu Pitiata, Desha Palaneki and a Sudu Pitiata, in own a Katia Kau the Kiela, Lanka Samaje, profile like a Kadratino, Ekan a May Sudu Pitiata, Hari and a Katia Vitrai, May Sudu Pitiata to learn our Saratini, and it take it our Sarane. May Sudu Pity at a Kenek Kenavanam, Eko Vishal Muda Sambar at the Enekenik, Visikaranatan Saliti Enekenik, Eatame Sudu Pity at Enna, Dora Reno, Kissi Prashnakne, Onatan Sali Visikarla, Onatan Salita Selankar and Puluanang, Eatame Sudu Pity, Dora Reno, Emanatang Chandiak, Marek, Marantak made the Shapan Sudu Pity at the Enoa. Kissi Prashnakne own lak a Dora Larna, but they may Sudu Pitta Pathak and Yan, Mare Avashe Ehemat Natnam Anta Takadik Game Karik E game may make a Satakapa to Sukhshemakame Ratahadan, Emanata may Ratati and Arthic Arbudis than an eme, Puluantaram Horkam Karana, Puluantaram may may make Krame Pathak and Yan, Avashe Karana, Kuta Buddhiatina, Game Karik. It's going to make game car and made the Japanic and Sudu Pitti. Dura Reno. The Mevake profile lekak, digger tapit a kiagani and a puluan, 
දේශපාලනයේ කාටද ලංකාවේ එහෙම දොර ඇරලා තියෙන්නේ කියලා. එතකොට කාන්තාවකට දේශපාලනයට සම්බන්ධ වෙනවා නම් අනිවාර්යයෙන්ම එක්කෝ මේ දැනට මේ සූදු පිටියේ ඉන්න කෙනෙක්ගේ බිරිඳක් එහෙම නැත්නම් දියණියක් එහෙම නැත්නම් සහෝදරියක් එහෙම නැත්නම් මොකක් හරි වෙනයා මොකක් හරි සම්බන්ධයක් තියෙන්න ඕනේ එහෙම නැත්නම් සාමාන්‍යයෙන් කාන්තාවකට තමන්ගේ දක්ෂකමින් අපි ඉංග්‍රීසියෙන් කියන ඔන් මෙරිට් මේ තමන්ගේ දක්ෂකමින් ලංකාවේ ප්‍රතිපත්ති සම්පාදන ක්‍රියාවලියට සම්බන්ධ වෙන්න ලැබෙන්නේ නැහැ එහෙම තියෙන අවස්ථාව ඊටම අඩුයි ඊටම සීමිතයි මම මේ අවස්ථාව බිඳුවයි ශූන්‍යයි කියලා කියන්නේ නමුත් ඊටම අවමයි ලංකාවේ දේශපාලනයට ගොඩාක් ඇවිල්ල තියෙන කාන්තාවෝ ගැන බැලුවොත් ඔබට තේරුම් ගන්න පුළුවන් මේ සූදු පිටියේ එදා ඉඳන් ඉන්න කට්ටියට සම්මොකක් හරි සම්බන්ධයක් නැත්නම් මේ අවස්ථාව ලැබෙන්නේ නැහැ එතකොට මේ වැඩසටහන අපි විශේෂයෙන්ම සංවිධානය කළේ ඇත්තටම ලංකාවේ කාන්තාව තමන්ගේ දක්ෂතාව මත තමන්ගේ ඒ ඉන්න ශේස්ත්‍රයන්හි දක්වන දක්ෂතාව මත දේශපාලනයට ඇවිල්ලා රට පාලනය කරන්න පටන් ගත්තොත් මේ රටේ මොන මොන වෙනස්කම් සිද්ධ වෙද්දී කියන කාරණය පැහැදිලි කරලා දෙන්න මොකද දේශපාලනය කියලා කියන්නේ අපි විශ්වාස කරනවා මේ බලය සඳහා කරන සූදුවෙන් විතන් වෙලා ඇත්තටම මේ සීරියස් විදිහට ප්‍රතිපත්ති සම්පාදනය කරන තැනක් බවට පත් වෙන්න ඕන එහෙම නැත්නම් ලංකාවේ අනාගතය මීටත් වඩා බියකරුයි the objective of this event is to highlight what sri lanka has missed out on due to inadequate participation of capable women in politics we have women in politics but they are some they are they are, they are connected to either they are from uh, very powerful political families so they have uh, some kind of connections with you know existing politicians so we want to highlight what sri lanka has missed out on over the past uh, 70 odd years a a a karane thamai moolika mata idirpat karanna one me ai api me wedis rahana karanne kiyana karaneta ithin bala poruttu wenawa api me sadaha thora gath aaradithayan ounge adahas idirpat karai kiyala ekat ekka apita sita balanna puluwan monowada me ratata ahimi vela tiyenne kiyala pahugiya avurudu 73 athulata we want you all to listen to these speeches go home today and weep for sri lanka and wake up tomorrow with a better conviction with a firm conviction to change things for the better thank you very much බෙහෙවින් ස්තුතිය ඔබට next gen sri lanka සංවිධානයේ සම කැඳවුම් කරු රසික ජයකුඩි මහතාට අපගේ ගෞරවනීය ස්තුතිය මම හිතන්නේ භාෂා දෙකෙන්ම එතුමන් පැහැදිලිව කතා කළා විවිධ ශේෂ්ත්‍රවල තිබෙන අර්බුද කාන්තාවක් යම් ශේෂ්ත්‍රයේ හිනි පෙත්තර ළඟා වෙනකොට අද්දකින් තිබෙන අය තමයි අද 8 දෙනෙක් කාන්තාවන් මේ වැඩසටහනත් එක්ක සම්බන්ධ වෙලා ඉන්නේ ඒ කාන්තාවන් ඒ අභියෝග වලට ඊටමත්ම සාර්ථකව මුහුණ දෙමින් තමයි ඒ ඒ ශේෂ්ත්‍රවල ඉහළටම එහෙම නැත්නම් හිනි පෙත්තටම ළඟා වී තිබෙන්නේ As we thank Rasika Jayakori, the co-convener of Next Gen Sri Lanka, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for us to set the stage for the brilliance of the women to follow. Now, we are privileged that these eight high-performing, invincible and confident women are joining us today to give us their perspectives on how we can find ways for inclusive and dynamic growth for the women of our Sri Lanka. of our country and how we can forge equality in every sphere in Sri Lanka. හොඳයි එහෙමනම් මම හිතනවා මම විශ්වාස කරන විදිහට දැන් තමයි මෙහි සුවිශේෂීම මොහොත නැත්තම් ඔබ බලාපොරොත්තුෙන් හිටපු ඒ අවස්ථාව. ඒ සුවිශේෂී කාන්තාවන් 8 දෙනා එකිනෙකා වේදිකාවට ගොඩ වන්නට නියමිතයි. ඔවුන්ගේ ජීවිතය ඔවුන් ලද අත්දැකීම් වලින් ඔවුන්ට අවස්ථාවක් ලැබුණොත් මේ රට මේ ක්‍රමය වෙනස් කරන්නට ඔවුන් දායකත්වය ලබා දෙන්නේ කොහොමද කියන කාරණාව අද මෙම වැඩසටහන තුලදී සජීවීව මේ වේදිකාව මත ඉඳ මේ කාන්තාව නට දෙන අය ඉදිරිපත් කිරීමට සූදානමින් ඉන්නවා. So we have 8 women and they have 8 minutes to tell us what 
they would do differently if they were given the opportunity to lead the country. Now, these are the wonderful women that we will be hearing from this evening, including Dr. Pabasari Ginige, consultant psychiatrist, senior lecturer, faculty of medicine at the University of Peradenia. We also have with us Sanjini Munavira, country director, Sri Lanka, ADA. We have Soundri David Rodrigo, music director, pianist, and lawyer. We also have with us Roel Raymond, editor-in-chief at Roar Media. Kumudu Priyanka, who is a Sri Lankan Paralympian. We have Shiromal Kure, chairperson, Jetwing Travels. Anoka Abeyratna, conservationist and environmentalist. And we have Pulani Ranasinghe, who is a technopreneur and founder at Loons Labs. So we are delighted that they will be sharing with us their thoughts in just a few minutes from now. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, let us now take the opportunity to introduce to you our first speaker this evening. Our first women leader is Dr. Pabasari Ginige, consultant psychiatrist, Senior Lecturer, Faculty of Medicine, University of Peradenia. She is an adult psychiatrist with a special interest in child abuse, intellectual disability, autism, and LGBTIQ mental health issues, as well as women's mental health. She is a much-loved teacher of undergraduate and postgraduate students. Itamatma Suisheshi Kantava. Why do you with the Hitapamanak Nimea? Kantavan gave Manasika Sauke, Daruan Ganakataka and Kuta, a Benuin, a Gedai Katwe, Upper remain Malabadi Tibeno, a with Raknevi, Guruvariak with the Hitaya, a at the Ginagana, Sisu Daru Dariange, Adre, Ihalin Madinaganata, Samatunu Kantava. Idin, Api Wide, Pabasari Ginigata, my other Tavasi, Pratamayan, I lead Devanadire. On that note, let's take a glimpse into the profile of our first speaker. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. And on that note, with a very warm applause. Let's welcome on stage Dr. Babasari Ginige. Gaurvenarium Karnava, Jeshta Katikacharya, Manasika Vaidya Visheshagnya, Vaidya Babasari Ginige, Garu Vaidya Tumiyanu. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On this International Women's Day, I stand here with all the 11,429,000 women of Sri Lanka. So thank you, Frederick Nauman Foundation and Next Gen Sri Lanka for giving me this, uh, giving me and them this platform. I'm 52 years old. In my lifetime, I have witnessed presidents stripping my country of its dignity and sovereignty. I have witnessed presidents ripping off the trust of the majority voter whose political literacy is pitiful whether they are illiterates or scholars, Vyatun. I have witnessed oppositions promising, I have witnessed pathetic oppositions promising people an unrealistic utopia, promoting a beggar culture with Sahana Malu or free Takarang. I have also witnessed oppositions the self-professed political puritans in their own comfort zones, preaching to their own followers sermons on the mount. Today, I'm standing in a country where the Saubhage Dakma, 
vistas of prosperity and splendor, ladies and gentlemen, has become yet another joke like Yahapalane. I have been reached by quite a few political forces inviting me into active politics over the last few years. I have said no because I believe the secularity in my DNA would stand in the way. Ladies and gentlemen, if I'm president, secularism is one principle with which I will lead. I will neither carry fruit baskets to the feet of high priests of any religion, nor I will offer luxury vehicles or esteemed positions in state higher educational institutes as Pirikara. But I will visit religious places only to reflect, reflect upon metta, mudita, karuna, all religions propagate. I will create a political movement where humanity will come above country, race, religion, or any other discriminatory factor. I will acknowledge that there is unresolved grief in North, East, West, and South of Sri Lanka, and the collective trauma of Easter attack. I will bring justice and genuine reconciliation to the victims so that Sri Lankans will truly be Meritocracy will be a guiding principle of my government. I will champion the introduction of minimum qualifications to enter politics. If I'm president, nobody with a record of child or women abuse or corruption will be given nominations. The people will have a choice of candidates with integrity and basic human decency. Mitra Varuni, Mama Nama Yojana Deni Nehe, Ashila Chara Saha, Kata Arihama Mole Bima Vatena, Kisive Kutat. If I'm president, I will rectify the failed economy that has made my country the basket case of Asia, a country where every essential fuel, where every essential fuel, electricity, food has become unattainable. If I'm president, I will not worsen inflation by printing money nilly willy. I will be realistic and go to the IMF, ask to restructure the loans, float the rupee, and encourage our migrant workers to send dollars through legitimate means. I will stop the state-led scams and confiscate black money to improve quality of my people. If I'm president, I will not suddenly wake up from my sleep and make policy decisions on carbonic fertilizers. Instead, I will systematically reconstruct the roadmap to green agriculture. I will not lead to the starvation of the people who produce the grains of rice on my plate because I will be guided by technocrats, wise people, not self-appointed know-it-alls, soothsayers, and she sorcerers. If I'm president, I will ensure quality and truly free healthcare. I will not leave room for political cronies to profit from antigen kits and quarantine centers. 
I will prioritize mental health, allocating adequate funds because there is no health without mental health. The LGBTIQA community will live with no fear or shame in a country I lead because I will bring law reforms enabling so. I will ignore fake moralists who scream, Sanskritiya vinashakaranava, when comprehensive sexuality education is attempted. Ladies and gentlemen, in this Dharma Dvipa, there are 11,187 reported cases of child abuse. I repeat, reported cases of child abuse in 2021. I will protect every child of my nation from all forms of abuse corporal punishment, neglect, and child marriage. If I'm president, I will bring major educational reforms. Children will not be abused in the name of education. Major examinations will not be stressors leading to anxiety and depression in the country I lead. The regressive method of segregating schools according to sex, religion, and race will be prohibited. So students learn equality, kindness, and respect for differences. I will modernize school and university education to suit the job markets, both locally and globally. If I am president, Within 24 hours of swarming in, I will outlaw all forms of ragging in the higher educational institutes in the country. I will invite the students to review their conduct and see whether that is any different from the state oppression, the Rajya Mardana they complain about. I will be an empathetic, kind, and friendly president, a people's president. And I vouch, I vouch to drive the opposition jobless. I will reinvent political morality. I will be the kind of president that makes it so hard for my successors to loot, to kill, violate rights, and cause pain and hunger of its citizen. I will be the kind of president who will be a secular moral force that defines all other presidencies to come. Thank you, Stuti Nandu. Thank you very much to Dr. Pabasuri Ginege for sharing with us those very interesting thoughts on how she will be a people's president and re-emphasize political morality in this country. On that note, we are now ready to introduce to you our second speaker for the day, Sanjani Munavira. She's Country Director Sri Lanka for ADA. Sanjani has over two decades of experience across multiple industries, bringing great success to the FMCG, Telco, Technology, BFSI, travel, as well as retail and manufacturing industries locally and globally. I lead Devana Dire, Milaga Shakti Matkantava Ayai, Sanjini Munavira Mahatmiya. Aya Sri Lanka ve Vivida Shastraval Addakim Bahula. Aya Niel and Shastri Age Dai Katwin, Ihelatam Ragani and Emata Samatu, Idamatma, Shakti Mat, Diriya Kantavak. On that note, let's take a brief look at our next speaker.
there we have it. Let's put our hands together for Sanjani Munavira. Thank you very much. It's three decades, not two. Um, I think I'm closing in upon my twilight years. So this is a really apt topic for me to uh, come here and talk to you guys on. Um, not in my wildest dreams do I ever even have a vision of leading the country, because by the time I hit my twilight years, Melinda, I think I would rather be on a beach on a hammock, because I've been working since I was 19, and it would be time to glide into my next phase in a happy mode. So on that note, thank you so much for inviting me here. I just have three perspectives. Um, I've been in leadership from the age of about um, 22. Um, I think, no, 21. Uh, I was an early bloomer, let's put it that way. Um, I remember the first uh, job that I went in for. I thought I was going to uh, make these little uh, creative items and uh, do something in an art department. But my boss thought that I had the gift of the gab and the ability to build relationships. So he plucked me out of that space and put me into something called client servicing in an ad agency. And I think I have stuck to my core in terms of business development, in terms of sales, and mostly uh, I think in the form of building relationships right throughout those three decades. Uh, and something that I have learned as a leader is that when you come into leadership, the one thing that changes for us is that it stops being all about me and it starts being about the people that we lead. So that's something that I think that uh, even from a country perspective, if I was to lead this country, the first thing that I would do is to ensure that I build a very strong and capable team. Because your uh, leadership skills and you as a leader will only succeed as uh, you will only be as successful as the team that you lead. Um, so I have been very blessed. I have had a numerous set of uh, teams that have worked really well with me. But in one place that I did work, I um, had a team that was not happy to have me as their leader. Um, and uh, that was an eye-opener for me. It started uh, because it started questioning the core fundamentals of what I had built my entire uh, career on, which was, like I said, building relationships. And the one thing that taught me was that that particular episode was to introspect and to find out what is it that I'm doing wrong? What is it that I need to do differently in order to win people's trust? And uh, very soon I realized that maybe there are some, some uh, losses that you've got to cut and move on and do something different. Um, so that's what I did. but. Um, what I want to say is that every team, every person that you have on your team brings a different perspective. And if I was leading this country, the first thing that I would do is make sure that I have a team that is uh, a different flavor. It would be uh, gender unbiased. It would have all types of people in it. It would have probably color, personality, a little bit of humor. And uh, it would break the stereotypes, because I think uh, for us to come into a leadership position, one of the prohibitive factors is the fact that you're different. And uh, I never think that I have an opportunity to get into something as, uh, as uh, serious as country leadership, because I'm not your stereotypical type of person. I have been a disruptive element all my life, and I think I will continue to be so until I'm no longer here. Um, so I think that's one thing that, uh, one thing that uh, keeps me uh, ticking. Um, so the other thing that I think we lack is uh, uh, purpose. I think I can't stress the importance of having purpose and driving a team towards the greater purpose. It's not about me, it's not about what I can achieve or what we can get uh, from our positions of power. It's about what we can give back in return. And if you set that purpose for your team, you will empower them 
into greater heights. Um, so the first time I learned the meaning of this word vulnerability was when I was 22 years old. Um, I was faced with a personal crisis. Um, my mom was taken with uh, breast cancer, and suddenly I realized that I had a lot of uh, responsibility that was going to come on my shoulders at home. But that also meant that I needed to be top of my game and make sure I give 110% in my uh, professional space because that was what people were depending on me. And I learned very fast that I had to trust people and I had to trust my team. And at 22, I realized the importance of building that team because without that team, I don't think there is any corporate leader that can uh, stand here and talk to you about how they've made it all on their own. They have a support system, they've got an ecosystem of people that drive them to get, uh, get ahead and be successful. And that's something that I cannot stress, stress the importance of. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is women in general, um, because today is Women's Day. And the one thing that I will definitely do is encourage more women to step out of their comfort zone. Uh, we get faced with many challenges. We are really apt at balancing the different roles that we have to play. Be it a homemaker, be it a mom, be it a career woman. I think the one thing that's unique to us as ladies is the fact that we have to play this juggling, balancing game all the time. And I think we get quite good at it. And um, that's something that we can bring forward. We need to be strong enough and I think the word is courageous enough to take that leap of faith. Not all of us have that ability, but I think we don't, we are our own limitation sometimes because we don't understand just how strong we are. And when you are faced with challenges, when you are faced with an opportunity to step out of your comfort zone, I think you should take that acid test and do that. Because in an uh, industry that I come from, technology, it is a male-dominated world, but things are changing. A lot more uh, women are coming out uh, doing the roles that were predominantly seen as something that a man would do. Um, in the place that I work in, uh, gender uh, equality is a huge topic. And I have been uh, really, I think, blessed with the ability to work with such an energetic bunch of people. There's a lot of young people. There's a lot of ladies. Of course, they challenge me every single day. But it's good banter, and it's mutually uh, successful, respectful type of banter that we see. Um, so you, you take an a, a area like where I am. It's a lot of data play. Um, and there are roles that are not very technical. You don't have to be a software engineer. You don't have to be a, a technocrat. You can actually be someone even in sales, in marketing, um, someone who's able to do a lot of customer intelligence. There are multiple roles that you can play. It's just that we don't step into that space, we don't own that power, and we are sometimes shying away from it. But what I want to encourage, if I was uh, given the opportunity, is to encourage ladies to take that leap of faith. Be courageous enough, because the sky is the limit for us. The only limitating factor is ourselves. Uh, the third thing I want to talk about is actually um, collective responsibility. Like I said, three decades of being in the corporate world has taught me one thing. When you are there in a particular industry or in a particular sector, you've got players number one, player number two, and player number three. There is no industry that has a monopoly of a single entity. And it is that collective responsibility that we have in that industry that makes us successful because we are collectively growing that industry. Be it the people we bring into the industry, be it the products and the services that we offer, or the type of messaging and the customer segments that we talk to. Because each of these brands, no matter how large or how small, would address a particular customer segment. And each of these people are equally important. So if you don't have collective responsibility, you are never going to grow an industry. And I think that is very, uh, very much so even in a country context. Uh, we can be competing against each other, but as a leader, I think one of the greatest skills that I would want to have is to be able to drive that uh, narrative of inclusivity, of working together towards a purpose that is greater than just petty squabbles and trying to 
Um, I think what we try to do is, even if somebody else is doing something really well, trying to bring, bring those people down. And I think that is going to, in the short term, probably get you a couple of votes. But in the long term, it's really going to destroy this country. And I hope that each of us have a mandate within us to leave a better place for the kids that we have brought into this world. Um, so I would like to leave you with a uh, quote from Michelle Obama. I was looking for all these leadership quotes uh, to share with you, um, but I think this one is quite apt, and uh, Michelle is a great lady. Um, so she says that people who are strong lift each other up, but people who are truly powerful bring people together. And if I was given an opportunity to lead this country, that's the legacy that I would want to leave behind. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Sanjani Munavira, for sharing with us so many wonderful leadership gems in your speech, including how in leadership it's less about the leader and it's more about the people, how we need to take the time out to build a winning culture, a winning team around us, and also how we all need to nurture in ourselves a sense of collective responsibility. So some great insights there by Sanjani. It's now time, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce to you our next speaker for the day, Soundari David Rodrigo. She's a music director, a pianist, as well as an intellectual property lawyer. Soundari is the founder and award-winning music director of Sri Lanka's premier female ensemble, Soul Sounds, which is the first choir in Sri Lanka to perform and win awards internationally. Over the last many years, Soul Sounds has given highly acclaimed performances in many countries under her visionary leadership. Hodai, I am Pili Bandava. Ketiyeng sata hanak taban na tay suudana mo. Piano wa tamay jivite karagat ay ay ge angeli thuduolin bihikarana sangeete ashcharyak. Ma dakhi na vidyete Lankave city na itamatma daksha piano wadan shilpiniya ay ay. Mangkitan obat seal mu dina, eh take kan gabe. Evi terakne be guru beri akwidi hatta, badan sihir pini akwidi hatta, eh jati antara niyojen ekiri mata wartamane samatwe ti benua. Sri Lanka we pertama kan tawan gin saman vita unu, gita khanda ayam soul sounds nirmane kran hatta, muli katwe gin katiyo tu kelip ayer. Itin ayer mevan vita soul sound he nirmatru beri esah, sangeeta dyakshi beri esah katiyo tu kerno. And now let's take a look at our next speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Soundary David Rodrigo. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the Friedrich Naumann Foundation, respected speakers who I share the stage with, my dear friends in the audience. Firstly, I would like to thank FNF and NextGen Sri Lanka for inviting me to be a part of what I see is an opportunity for the voice of women representing different sectors to speak on what they would like to see change should they be given a chance to lead the country. On the 27th of February, 2022, just a few days ago, at this very venue, we, five individuals who were very passionate about music from different faiths, launched the World Interfaith Choral Ensemble. The concert started with the Muslim Choral Ensemble walking up, chanting something from their faith, followed by the Christians, the Hindu Choral Ensemble, and the Buddhist Choral Ensemble. The concert culminated with the song, Heal the World, and Raghupati Raga, where all four ensembles sang in harmony the song that conveyed a simple message that yes, we can come together despite the differences, we can share the same stage and we can make the world a better place. To me, this was a very moving event, personally to see the youth from different faiths embracing their differences, 
yet coming together because they have something in common, common dreams, common goals, common aspirations. So if I were to lead the country, I think I would firstly be sure to embrace the differences of the people of my country. I have traveled around the world, having studied both in England and the USA, as well as been given the opportunity to migrate to Australia way back following the 1983 riots. However, my family decided not to take it, and even though I belong to the Tamil minority community, and the war was only going to get worse in the years that followed, to date, I don't think it's a decision my family and I regret. Why? Because I truly believe that Sri Lanka is a beautiful place to live in, and the country has every potential to do well. Clearly, we have not utilized or rather maximized on our strengths. We need to embrace our differences, work on our strengths, and realize that while there is diversity, we all have common dreams and aspirations. Key areas such as education, freedom of expression, language rights should be revisited. We need to work with our young children. We need to show them the differences and instill in them the notion that it's okay to be different because we too have same dreams. We too have dreams to do well in life. And the person next to you is your brother or your sister. The concert I referred to reminded me of how religion is taught in schools and my own school days. The focus and emphasis is always on differences and each religion is taught in isolation. And there is almost no effort to foster interfaith dialogue or opportunities for students to mingle, to explore, to discuss the commonalities despite the different faiths. All education settings from schools to universities should give students tools to navigate diversity and differences in opinions and beliefs. Given the opportunity to lead the country, I would work on our education system so that we know the value of each other, no matter the differences. That comes from focusing on activities such as arts, culture, sports, through which I strongly believe lies the tool to bring people together. I am grateful for the education system in Sri Lanka, having had the opportunity to study at the Colombo Law Faculty, University of Colombo. But yet again, similar to the school system, as I was in the English medium, we rarely got an opportunity to mingle with my colleagues from the Singhala and Tamil mediums. Hence, I feel at every point within our education system, we don't really give an opportunity for the youth to work together in harmony, which in musical sense means notes put together to make a beautiful sound. So why not put people together to create something beautiful? I have seen children of different religions and ethnicities come together to share their common passion for music, which is from singing in choirs to playing in orchestras. But do we have government support for these activities? No. In 2004, a group of young girls, a girls choir from Sri Lanka for the first time represented the country in Wales at a prestigious choral festival. And they were placed first runners up. The choir consisted of young girls from diverse backgrounds. Music not only gave them exposure and diverse opportunities, but also developed their personalities in the process. From helping them see beyond the borders of Sri Lanka, it also gave them confidence in experimentation, creativity, and the tools and sense of appreciation to learn from grades, whatever field they chose thereafter. Despite their talent and potential, they did not have any form of backing from the government. And being in the same field even now, I can say that even in 2022, the system has not changed. It is only the private sector that comes forward to help, and that too is not easy. So having a tool which helps nurture young children who would eventually become leaders, why is it that we do not have backing? So if I were to lead the country, 
No, I wouldn't be starting choirs. I wouldn't be insisting that children learn music, but I would be aware of the fact that it is activities such as this that should be given support as their leaders to working together, embracing differences, and in the long run, learning to work as one family. So I would definitely make sure culture is given more prominence, giving opportunities for our young children to work together, to see the world, to come together as one Sri Lanka. Which brings me to yet something else I strongly believe in. Sri Lanka is a country of immense talent. I said it way back in 2004 when the choir won a medal in Wales, and I say it again with strong conviction that no matter the field, we can always excel. But this talent has to be nurtured, harnessed. If I were given a chance to lead the country, I would certainly make sure that Sri Lankan talent is given the recognition and most importantly, all the support it needs. I have always avoided politics. My dad used to read the newspapers daily and talk about politicians because no matter the party, I would hear the word corrupt way too often. Of course, I had my music, so it didn't really affect me. But it goes without saying, sadly, that the word corrupt has been associated with politics. We need to change that. And the change would begin with the person leading the country, putting the people first, the country first. But that would also have to come with an undying passion to have the Sri Lankan flag flying high, not for personal gain or fame, but for the country we all belong to. And the vision I would have for the country as leader would come from the song that I recently taught some very young singers, and from actually a woman composer who I really admire, Minon Fernando, and I quote from her song, Proud to be Sri Lankan. We are proud to be Sri Lankans. We work with head held high, no matter where you are or from, and that is why we are one voice, we are one nation, we are one hope, we have one dream, waiting for reality. We walk in glorious freedom. It's the dawning of a day where children of one country stand united in every way. We are one voice, we are one nation, and the golden land you see, Sri Lanka is for you and me. In the early 2000s, I worked with the International Center for Ethnic Studies, led by yet another lady I look up to and admire, Dr. Radhika Kumaraswamy, and I headed the Constitutionalism Project, where I was tasked with interviewing different segments of people from all over the country, the North, South, East, and West. And during this research, I realized that their wants were the same. They wanted their voice to be heard, not for their differences, but they wanted those differences recognized. It certainly wasn't wrong for a Tamil living in the North and East to question why they had letters sent to government schools in those areas in Sinhalese, was it? So my dear friends, if I were to lead the country, I wouldn't waste time pointing fingers at what went wrong or who is to blame. Mind you, yes, I do believe that justice should prevail. But like I always tell my students, give me solutions, not problems. So I would focus on the way forward, analyze the mistakes, learn from it, and rectify. My days working for the Sark region, again inspired by yet another leading lady, Ambassador Nirupama Rao, opened my eyes to the rich South Asian culture we all share, and how fortunate we are to be Sri Lankans, the pearl of the Indian Ocean, rich in culture and diversity. I could go on and on on what I would do different if I were to lead the country, but time does not permit me. So I would end with the lyrics of a song taken from the Hunchback of Notre Dame, which is my hope for Sri Lanka. And I quote, I hope that someday life will be fairer, need will be rarer, greed will not pay. And to quote the great Martin Luther King, which I feel is apt given the crisis our country currently faces, I end by saying, if I were to lead the country 
and I quote, I say to you, my friend, that in spite of the difficulties and frustrations of the moment, I still have a dream. And personally to me, that dream would be to make sure we work together despite the differences in being proud to be Sri Lankan. Thank you. Thank you very much to Soundri David Rodrigo for those wonderful and visionary insights, emphasizing how we all need to come together despite our differences and how we need to prioritize education, the arts, as well as interfaith harmony. On that note, it's our pleasure now to introduce to you our fourth speaker this evening, Roel Raymond, who is Editor-in-Chief at Roar Media. She's a senior journalist with experience in both the private and state sectors and has worked with print, radio, television and online formats. I lead Devanadire, Milaga Kantava AI. Vartamani Charamadi Shestre, Prabala Nyojana Kaya, Vidyut Saha Mudritama, Demianch Dekehima, at Addekim Rasak Tibino, Evitrak Nevi, Poutkilika Saraja, and Shaken Mianch Dekama, Agejivite, Madi Jivite, Tula Jeshtama, the Vedi Necklace, Nyojana Kuratibino. Let's now take a look at our next speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Royal Raymond. Hi, everyone. Thank you, FNF Sri Lanka and Next Gen Sri Lanka for inviting me onto this panel alongside these strong, wonderful women, each role models in their own fields. Our topic is to speak on what we would do differently if we were given the opportunity to lead Sri Lanka. It's strange, over a decade ago, even before I became a journalist, I swore I would get into politics to change some things I particularly despised. I felt at that time that change could and would only come from top. I still believe that leadership is important and that change can be top down, but the closer I get to politics, and I feel that my work has got me very close indeed, the more averse I am to actually getting involved. Today is International Women's Day. The idea, as I understand it, behind hosting this event is to encourage women to be more involved in policy making. But if I were to turn to any of the women who were invited to speak today and invite them to get into politics for the sake of the country or to clean things up, I'd be willing to wager some very hard to find dollars that they would think twice, if not outright decline. We all know that Sri Lanka has some of the lowest numbers of female representation in politics in the world. The only two female heads of state we have had were from the one extremely politically connected family. So what is it that makes women, even high achievers, like the ones that were invited to speak today, decline to get involved? I beg your pardon. It is the very thing that keeps some very capable men away from national politics. The knowledge that their expertise and achievements wouldn't make an iota of a difference if they were to actually enter the fray. So what do you need to be successful in politics in Sri Lanka today? You need to know how to bend the rules. You need to believe there's no right and no wrong. You need to be able to lie to your constituents, to your family, to your friends, and most damningly and most damagingly to yourself. You need to believe your lies. You need to be able to justify unjust actions. You should relish backstabbing and betrayal. You should be able to get rich illegally and not feel bad about it. You shouldn't care about the future of this country or about future generations. You should be able to take what doesn't belong to you, build a legacy for your family, and feel good about it. You should be able to stand by and watch as injustices are perpetrated. You should be able to keep silent, see no evil, hear no evil, but by all means perpetrate evil. You should be able to abuse power, 
In fact, the less you know about the limits to power, the better. You should be grossly unethical and unremorseful about it. You need to be thick-skinned and not have a conscience. And if you are not any of these things, you need to be, at the very least, ineffectual. Have I said enough? <laughs> the results of this malaise are manifest in society today. We have run out of money, our economy is in shambles, policy making is faulty and weak. Have you noticed how many deaths and suicides are being reported? Queues are forming outside fuel stations, and police is deployed to ensure there is no rioting. Protests are erupting all over the country. And what about the other, more long-standing issues? Child abuse, domestic abuse, gender-based violence, sexual harassment, discrimination, ethnic tensions, racism. This is just the tip of the iceberg, and I am no doomsday prophet. This is the reality in Sri Lanka today. The economy may write itself in due course, but will the more long-standing issues Sri Lanka is confronted with go away? No. So what will it take to make things right? What would I do if I were given the opportunity to lead the country? I would abolish the executive presidency, which gives the president, any president, more power than he or she needs. Repeal the Prevention of Terrorism Act, which is so ambiguous that it allows for the abuse of a law that should protect, and in fact, ensure that laws that are meant to protect are not used to stifle dissent. Remove the 20th Amendment to the Constitution, which, among other things, enhances the powers of the executive presidency. Reintroduce the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, which introduces independent commissions. And if there is a need for a brand new constitution to make sure fundamental rights, balance of power, and accountability are ensured. To stand firm against discrimination on the basis of race, religion, sexual orientation, sexual preference, ethnicity, and gender. To ensure the rights of girls and women are protected in the Muslim Marriage and Divorce Act. To strengthen rule of law to protect children, women, the vulnerable, and minorities. To ensure protection of orphans who, after the age of 18, cease to become wards of the state are at the mercy of society. To ensure the protection of the elderly and homeless. To ensure equal opportunity for all. We live in a patriarchal society in which the playing field is tilted in favor of men. We need to ensure the playing field is level so that women and their contributions are recognized and rewarded. We need to ensure a cap on campaign spending. Gentlemen in politics today, a cap on campaign spending will level the playing field for you as much as for women. And yet, even within your camp, those with more power, more connections, and more money stay silent. This needs to end. To run the government like an efficient organization, effectually. To appoint based on merit and remove based on performance. To have public representatives actually, and perhaps only, represent the public. To ensure, the freedom of the, to ensure freedom of speech and freedom of the press. To have and maintain standards in all industries. To become a city and a country with values that we can all be proud of. But I am not a politician, and this is not what is being offered to you today. So I submit we don't wait until the political system changes to make things work, because I feel that what is really absent in society today is a culture of honor. Because to honor something is to hold it in deep respect, with deep regard. And if we truly honored our country, and if we truly honored ourselves, the way things are being done in this country would truly bother us. I'm a Christian, and perhaps the most often quoted scripture I know of is Matthew 22, 39, which says, we ought to love our neighbors as ourselves. Alone, it was not a scripture I found particularly enchanting growing up, but I understand now that it speaks to the culture of honor we ought to encourage amongst ourselves. And so I submit, we ask ourselves the question, how relevant am I? What am I doing to ensure we live honorable lives today? Because you and I could choose through small and large acts of resistance for the first time in our lives, perhaps, to honor ourselves, to honor those around us, to honor our country, and to truly become relevant to society. 
Let me remind everyone here that to honor is not to worship. It is not to show respect where it is not deserving. It is to say what is right, to stand for what is right, and to do, do what is right. We need to understand that things are not as hopeless as they seem, and that governments and leaders will listen if people begin to want the right things. So don't wait until you're dealing with eight-hour power cuts to get onto the streets. Don't wait till your comfort is compromised to protest wrongdoing. Because if you do, you are no different to the leaders you castigate. Let us all develop a conscience. Let us develop a sense of honor. And let's truly begin to become relevant to our cities. Thank you. Thank you very much to Roel Raymond for her very thoughtful address. And from her address, we all learned that it's important for us to ensure the protection of the vulnerable in society, to enable freedom of speech and press, to also encourage a culture of honor amidst us and enable equal opportunity for all. So we thank Roel for those very thoughtful remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, so far we've heard from four dynamic women representing various backgrounds, including that of education, of music, of journalism, and the corporate world. And before we invite the next four incredibly inspirational women on stage, it's now time for a special entertainment act. And in this song, ladies and gentlemen, we will be understanding how a woman is truly a queen in every aspect. Mereka itu apa? Vivida Shastra vala ini penting terma langga. Awanu kan tawan hatra dene samaga unge adhas beda hada gatta. Tawat mereka ni shakti mat kan tawan hatra dene kami me di kawat gorda wana ni emitai. Ida mat ten me suisheshi githa oba venu ven. Kan tawa yano Reginak abiyoga vala ter shakti mat mohon dene diriya gehaniak. Dahasak bade ka hamuye uat nuseli diriya tiana ayah sebabin Reginak me udah abiti benne. Dari siapa kan tawan ter ni dah hasil ilmu mata kahliai. Handu wenne, lay patulari tu nat perila. Pihavinne, kohe kotena ehunat chodena. Mage varuven, harisiruven, amavate. Raturosamal, pavadana te matapegune. Miture. Rajini. Sakbata kala ya boe te chivite ne ma salila e kisi vak ni sa tunya me asamana ve obarupa yen hadakariye sundara hitin sara sunu landun. Bebel day love me today. Rajini.
Madulak meti atle geti hinnaru fe Hinsa kala pida kala kohe hengune Negiti na dan viraya ranjaya mavate Mudu papi annu aningiyo ne peradune Ashanti Dialvis ke handa nartan nirmane mudrika swarna tele nartan khanda ema. Jiwite adhaki ma apu shakti mat karna ma samhara vasta vala manusi ke apu khada bi mita pahat karna ma apu vurtiya jiwita himi karo na. Paudgilik jiwite ta apda prashna te karna vasta apu dakhlati na apu jiwite adhaki ma hamuye. Wajah urdu dasi di ayah mohon dipu adat kimat samagin ayah ketara manusia wa pida wa ta patpu wad manusia wa khada wa tu nadi kila ayah pilih bandu thoro thoro soya balno kade mata adha ganat beruna viswasa keranat beruna. Namu adat dawasa bani mite ayah jati antre jaya ganat samat kriti kawak bawa ta patwi ti be manam itamat ma asharya. Ayahnya na ya piya kata kerana itu sudah nama warnet. Di dahas wisu wasre di Tokyo Para Olympic jati antara thangge niyojne kerana itu samatunu Sri Lanka kredit kawa. Amihiri adakim hamuye unat tham jiwite jaygat shakti mat kan tawak ada me I lead wedi kawa te godawan nta samatwi ti benua. Ayah agi jiwite ay niyojne kala vivida thangge sauladi loka warta pihitu an nta samatunu diriya kan tawak. Ladies and gentlemen, the next powerful woman that we are about to hear from is Kumudu Priyanka, who is a Sri Lankan Paralympian. She's the current world record holder in the women's 200-meter T45 category. She made her maiden Paralympic appearance representing Sri Lanka at the 2020 Summer Paralympics. Let's take a glimpse at our next speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Kumudu Priyanka. Gauraniya, mage purwesi angge nawasarai. Pertama, mama beli bandar, disasai tabala, me awas tawat aradana kiri pel bandar, satu dua nama. Ita tada suci si kerana wanne abad sahita pudgele sandha, kanta aburde wenwen, ishala seraya kiri mata mata awas tawal abima. Pertama ini, aparat sahabat kita teratak lepas godaan game itu selama perwesian wikwa samanat main katet kelihatan. Saralam kewat kisme hatuak mata suci suci pudgele gulai se nam nokata katet kiri me ita amat ma wedagat. Khususnya ini ma abad sahit pudgele an gat kala orang tal abadiya kis selama deh rata ayu abiyurudia benuin. Labadi mat, manusia ni dah sel labadi mat, ita mat terdegar. Abad sahijit pudgal yang nuenuin, mage pautgal ke jiwite labagat selum adhakim. Krida nuenuin labagat adhakim nun. Ewagai mage jiwite mama labalat iya na katu adhakim, selu de marai nun. Mama, abad sahita saha kredit kan ta waktu dia ada kredit awal tu, jomin inna ayat tu sahayoge labadi mata itu amat mak kemati. Selalu mak kan ta wang, thamam mawalesa salakala gawe gawrawen 
ගෞරවණීය කරන්න ඒ වගේම ගෞරවණීය වන්න සියලුම කාන්තාවන්ට සුබ කාන්තා දිනයක් අද දවස කුමුදු ප්‍රියංකා මම හිතන්නේ ඇගේ ජීවිතේ ඇයට මේ ආයි ලීඩ් වේදිකාව සුවිශේෂී අවස්ථාවක් වෙන්නට ඇති ඇය මුහුණු දීපු අත්දැකීම් සමගින් ඒ අත්දැකීම් ඊටමත්ම කෙටි කාලයකදී ඔබත් එක්ක බෙදා හදා ගන්නට ලැබීම Ladies and gentlemen that was Kumudu Priyanka for you and she was emphasizing how we do, we need to equally respect the rights of disabled people Our next speaker ladies and gentlemen is Shiromal Kure who is the chairperson at Jetwing Travels she heads one of the leading inbound outbound travel management com companies in Sri Lanka and she's also the chairperson of Jetwing Hotels Private Limited a premier hospitality brand that owns and manages 30 hotels and 10 villas in Sri Lanka මීළඟ ගැරවුම ඇයට සභාපතිනිය වශයෙන් ඇය කටයුතු කරනවා වර්තමානයේ ශ්‍රී ලංකාවේ තිබෙන ඊටමත්ම කීර්තිමත් හෝටල් සමූහයේ වන ජෙට්වින් හෝටල් සමූහයේ ඇගේ අධ්‍යක්ෂීම් අයිලීඩ් වේදිකාව තුල බෙදා ගන්නටයි ඇගේ සූදානම. Let's take a look at our next speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Shiromal Kure. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. I warn everyone, uh, honorable minister, members of the opposition, distinguished invitees, fellow speakers, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a long time since I've played this game of if i was somebody what will i be so i guess i've got another opportunity at this age to play that game um so if i am given an opportunity to lead this country first thing i would do is look at get some people and try to analyze what is wrong with the country you know what what is the problem right now because i feel we live in two worlds one world says there's nothing wrong you know these people are making up things there is you know this mischief makers and you know they are all saying the wrong thing the world that i live in tells me there are lots of problems you know i don't i don't need to tell you though some of those challenges were shared with you all the fuel the the food the gas you know i it's it's lim limitless i come from tourism and although the country needs foreign current exchange we don't have fuel to take the clients around we get letters every day from our foreign partners asking will our people be having enough food so that is the kind of world i think we are living in but i'm i'm uh, i'm confused how come there is another world that doesn't believe in this so what i will do first is get a set of economic experts because i think the country has a real drastic economic crisis so i'm not going to get my friends and relatives into this but i'll get a nice diverse inclusive uh, group of people e economists maybe not even people who have been successful 10 years ago because the world has changed so the kind of world they were used to may not work in this right time so that's what i will do and once i understand i will read i will talk to the people i will talk to the business community i will talk to women men people from different religious groups and understand the current status then i will communicate with my people i will be truthful i will be honest and i will be authentic in what i say because i don't see anybody telling me what is wrong everybody is blaming each other but nobody is telling me this is the situation a good example of a good communicator is president zelensky from ukraine he is out there telling the people motivating them getting them together telling them everything i mean he is under so much threat uh, stress threat to his life but that is the kind of leader i would aspire to be if i'm given this opportunity and then i will also try to i wouldn't want to treat my people as idiots or fools i will not if i were to use a phrase 
I will not make them go not andanava. You know, I, I don't want to be told something that is not true. I, I, I hate when I'm considered, I'm taken for an idiot, and I don't think people in my country also would like to be treated as idiots. So I will tell them the truth. And if the truth is hard to un believe, it's, it's fine. I think people will understand when there is a problem. I have the experience in the last, well, within the last 24 months, we had a, we, the, the, the pandemic caused lots of problems to the industry I'm in. And we needed to talk to our people. My brother and I had to look people in the eye and tell them we have a serious problem. We don't have a single cent coming into the company. We need to all take pay cuts. And my brother and I didn't take any salary. So you have to lead by example. You can't ask people to give up one meal and then, you know, be at uh, various, I, I don't want to take, become personal, but that is how I would lead. I will lead by example, doing what other people are expected to do. And that is, I'm saying, with, with experience. And people do understand. People do, actually, if you are honest, if you tell them, this is the problem, and to get out of this problem, this is what we need to do. However hard it is, believe me, you, people will understand. And they will get together. I mean, you heard the other speakers say, what a beautiful country we live in. And there's so much hope. There's so much that can be done in these 65,000 square meters of this country. And the people we have are so talented. And, uh, and Soundarya, and so many people were talking about the diversity, the talents that we have. So there is much to be done. And I'm, I hope I will have the leadership qualities to carry on doing what I have done in a company, with, or as the others said, with a team of people and uh, you know, carry on to do, lead my country as well. Uh, right now, we have a problem with foreign exchange. So I will concentrate on trying to get as much as possible of this foreign exchange, because it is not just the debt. There is also about $200 million of outflow, which we need to manage. So I would definitely float the exchange, but it will be done, of course, in a managed way, because we can't suddenly from 200 go to 260. So it will be done in a managed way. And I will also, if we have printed too much money, I will try to get some of it out of the system, maybe increase interest rates, uh, again, ex uh, foreign currency, uh, floating the currency rate, all that will help people, business people, migratory workers, who are using the informal sectors. There are business people who are keeping the money overseas. They're not bringing the dollars back to the country. There are migratory workers using the Hawala system, various systems to bring in money to the country. That's because there's excess liquidity here. So we need to take back some of this liquidity. We need to entice people to bring in the money. You know, it, sometimes we need to be patriotic. So we need to uh, get into the patriotism of the individuals and tell them, don't, don't make use of an opportunity. People need you. And we are leading by example, so please do that. And I, and I can assure you, our people will do that. So uh, I will also increase competition. I don't know why we can't have more than two gas companies. Why are we having only two companies issuing fuel? If there are people who are willing to uh, invest money and take risks in this country, I will in, uh, allow anybody to come and uh, set up a company. That will, I think, uh, stop this uh, rain, rain, um, kind of the rain of the, uh, what we call the license Raj. You know, we need to know somebody. I need to be politically, uh, I mean, affect or involved with somebody to get a license. So if I don't, I can't do something. So I will break this system and make sure that anybody who will be the experience with the money can come and compete on an equal playing field. Another thing I will also, I would also allow market prices to prevail and reduce the controls that the state is having. State should not stifle competition. State should not tell me at how, what price I can sell my property. It's up to me to decide. If I'm efficient enough in my business to sell it, maybe 
10 rupees less than somebody else, let me do that. Or if I want to increase the price for t by 10 rupees, let me do that. The person who's buying it should have the right to decide, am I buying it from A, B, or C? So I will bring that kind of uh, level playing field into the country, and I will ensure that, I mean, I, I don't see the reason why fuel prices are currently subsidized. And even a tourist who comes from the USA or UK, they are paying a subsidized price that most of us here, the taxpayers' money, is used to subsidize. Uh, so any, any foreigner living here or any foreigner coming as a tourist is being subsidized by you and me. So we let, let everybody pay a normal price. And if there is a marginalized section who, who is unable to pay that, there are so many schemes, Samurdi, there are so many schemes that can be used to assist them so that they don't get affected. But let the people who can afford it pay it. I think that is something that I would strongly implement. I'm also a strong believer of a liberalized economy. Why, why do we have so many controls? Why can't I, if I want to have an industry that is controlled, that is, there's a monopoly, I, I, why am I stopped from doing it? But if I want to import something at a cheaper price, why can't I import it? You know, it's uh, this, this whole era of uh, import substitution, being self-sufficient, it's something I don't believe in, so therefore I'm not going to, I'm going to abolish all of that. Uh, another thing that I would do is streamline the processes that we are having. There's so much corruption as other people spoke of, and I think when there's technology available, when we can do most of these things online, there's a lot of resistance from the bureaucrats maybe not to uh, have online systems because that takes their power away and that also doesn't, uh, you know, otherwise I, I don't have to go to somebody and maybe pay 100 rupees to take the file from this desk to the other desk. So if, if it is all online, and if there is a nice uh, record of when the application was made, what are, you, what are the problems that are there, then there is this transparency, very little room for corruption, and it also takes that power the bureaucrat has to sometimes you re send a letter and nobody would respond to it. All I will need is a yes or no. So if I'm a leader, I would ensure that any body can have equal access to a tender, to any anything, and be equally participating in that process. Um, something else, I mean, I, I think I can I go on. I'm not going to t uh, take too much of your time. But another thing I would also do is monetize all our uh, SOEs, our state-owned enterprises. We are only talking about the liabilities of these. I, those are very asset-rich companies. Maybe why not we recognize them? Maybe we revalue them, take that into uh, account. And perhaps you and I can also take some shares in these companies so that we also become proud owners of some of the assets that we have or maybe sell to foreign investors, but run them efficiently and make sure this country benefits from it rather than them be leeches and sucking out whatever monies we have. Uh, I will also increase uh, our fiscal, uh, the, our GDP to tax is very low, and it's one of the lowest, I think, in the region. If the country needs money, I think, I think we, we can pay a little bit more. Why are we always asking for uh, tax breaks? This is the time the country needs you and me to think at a, on a broader perspective. And I think if you and I are led properly, honestly, and with purpose, I'm sure I can trust on each of you to support me and, and take this country from this uh, crisis that we are in. There is also another requirement to have more women uh, at this decision making. I mean, if you take most of the, uh, the steering committees, the, what, what we've been having, uh, successive governments have put, very few women are there. You know, women's uh, voice is not heard. I have been at many meetings with maybe so many men, and I'm there as a single woman. My voice is not heard. Nobody bothers to even 
uh, listen to me. I might need to put my hand up, and they, there are times when they say, uh, now the gentleman, I have to say, excuse me, I'm there as well. So we need to get people to uh, respect women. We need the leaders to understand that women also have a voice. So I would try to do that. I would try to get women involved. I mean, I'm not saying it's not going to be 100% women, but there are equally capable women. There are women. And a woman does not have to get into the shoe of a man. We have our own shoes. We can wear our own shoes and be equally competent as a man. So thank you for giving me this opportunity. And uh, if I get to lead the country, I hope I can take it to a better place. Thank you. Thank you very much to Ms. Shiroma Kure for sharing with us your perspectives, how as leaders we must emphasize telling the truth and how we must lead by example, and also for sharing with us how strategies such as streamlining processes and increasing competition can help us ensure that we have a healthy economy. Now, our next speaker today is Anoka Abe Ratna, who is a conservationist and environmentalist. She's an activist on sustainable development issues, and she served as the Asia-Pacific representative to the United Nations Habitat Youth Advisory Board. She is the elected environment lead of the Royal Commonwealth Society. In 2019, Anoka appeared in a list of iconic Sri Lankan women who have shaped history. Vivida Shastra Nyojane Karana Kanta Van Atadinikugin Saman Vita Yada Mimavedi Kava, Milagata Pasudanam, Ayata Arayum Karana, Anoka Biratna, Parisara Vedinia, Kriakari Tirasara, Sangwar the Nevidwin Hamamuhotima Penisitna Kantava. So bad the Hama Samahara Kilava Tape Dunwa te Kapta Amataka Venema, Samaji, Magahara and Samahara Tan Gen Herada Kwamin, Epilivanda Katikawa Gudanagana to Samatunu Kantava Klesa, Anoka Biratna Pata, Hadunwana to Pulwa. Let's take a glimpse at our next speaker. Please welcome Anoka Abeyratna. Good evening, everyone, um, especially to the distinguished guests and all the amazing and wonderful women that I've been sharing the stage with today. So here we are in a post-COVID world with a Ukraine and Russia war, still unable to figure out basics in a country. Sustainability is something that's so important and vital that we keep forgetting, even in Sri Lanka, um, I think um, Shiramal mentioned how important the environment is. People come here for the environment. They love to see the wildlife. They love to see all the beautiful things that our country has to offer, including the hospitality of our people. I want to share a personal story about something that we underwent when we were campaigning for the Animal Welfare Bill. We met with a politician and when we spoke about how important the animal welfare bill was, the person's response was, but you know, animals can't vote. So how do we go forward from there? So it takes a lot, a lot of effort, a lot of bringing people together, and something that I learned from my school, non CB said omnibus, not for self but for all, is something that we continue to embody as we go forward. Because if you look at Sri Lanka or any of the issues that we have right now, it's all about understanding where the root causes are, understanding the solutions, and bringing forward sustainable solutions because we can't be thinking in the short term. That has failed us up to this point. I want to talk about practical realism and empathy. We seem to lack this a lot in, in the current society. We don't seem to understand the realities and the challenges that people seem to be going through, especially when it comes to understanding the environment from a systems perspective. If you look at a lake 
all the environment that surrounds it, from mangroves to wetlands to even the lagoons and the oceans, we fail to understand that so many people rely on these systems and this ecosystem, that there are lots of animals that rely on this too. So the moment that we disrupt it with something unplanned, with something that's not important, well, I mean, economically, you have so many different things that are important, but if you don't plan it well, then you end up disrupting a lot of life, including a lot of communities. So what happens then? What happens then is that environment becomes a privilege issue. It becomes something about affordability. And it comes down to a place where a lot of women and young girls can't afford to buy things that are more sustainable to be more sustainable, or to even live a more sustainable lifestyle. So it really comes down to making things more affordable and easier to access. And that's something I would love to do, to create subsidies, to create accessibility for alternatives, and to promote things like a single-use plastic span. In going forward, it's so important to understand how Sri Lanka's ecosystems work by implementing things like elephant corridors, by understanding how the national parks need to be interconnected. I'm all about the solutions, and it should focus solely on understanding and connecting those people and the processes and the places. More than anything, I want to share with you stories about resilience of women in communities who face so many issues and challenges from not just walking to really far away places to get water, but to even having some firewood or gas to cook today. It's about still getting up every single day and making sure that not just your community, but also your family is safe and well. And these are stories that we hear every single time that we work with communities. I also want to touch on ethics and integrity. A friend of mine recently went through a very tough time where her trust was broken and betrayed. And sometimes I feel like that's something that happens a lot. And you need to have that culture of honor, like Royal said. You need to have that empathy, honor, ethics, and integrity in going forward. And that's something I would definitely embody. I want to wrap up by saying a quote that someone I cared for very deeply once shared with me, respike finem, which means look to the end. If we connect the dots backwards and we look at what our end goal, what our purpose, and where we really want to go, it would make a lot of sense to start doing things that are ethical, that are good, and that come from a good place for everyone. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you very much to Anoka Abe Ratna for emphasizing to all of us why we need to prioritize the environment, ethics, and integrity in order to lead Sri Lanka to a brighter future. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to our final speaker this evening, Pulani Ranasinghe, who is a technopreneur and founder of Loons Lab. She leads a fast-growing, innovation-friendly software startup company in Sri Lanka that delivers a wide range of services in the latest technologies to a diverse portfolio of local and global clients. Ada dawa se awasan shakti mat kanta wa ayah pulani rana singh loans lab ayat ni nirmatru hari adyakshika wa ita amat pun punci wa esok di pawa vivesa ikah awak vi me sihine tamai agi jiwite ti bune idin muli ke pragdane akwat nometiwa ikan kanta awak vi dihera loku waga kimak aragena ay mema via pare mema ayat ni aram bukarla ti bunak ting ada bani vite parigan ke engineeru sheshre ihera tamai anat ayat hacky awal ebi ti bunak. Let's take a look at our final speaker. Please welcome Pulani Ranasinghe.
Well, uh, good evening to all of you. And I'm really honored to be here. So thanks a lot for inviting me, NextGen and Frederick Nerman Organization. Um, so um, I think this is a very interesting topic. Like if I'm to lead this country, what would I do differently? So I have actually a lot of things in my mind, but since we have to limit it for eight minutes, I was thinking I would just focus on my uh, key areas, which is like the technology and the um, like entrepreneurship and, and the things that I can build around and that I can have a vision on. So uh, since everyone spoke in English, I'll, you know, to balance, I'll also like shift into seeing at least time to time. So um, if you take this country, I, I would say the first thing I would do is make a strategy for this country to move forward for next 20 or 50 years. Because like one thing that we find is like we see like amazing things coming up in Pratipatiwala Goda Klasam Deval in Ike Hema Pakshikam. I think May Deval Kalin Kalita Venasiddi, Ratakyana Dishanati Aurdu Hatraki Natam Pahaking Venasiddi Kohomada Ekavidhakata Yanati may may Prashantama Mandakina Aperatatina Mulikam Prashnak with it, Ekin the Mama Hitrama, Mama Lida Kenekuno. A position ke eva game dang in hamo make a tukaragana uh karana palavini de tamai eka pratipatya kadana agree una make a tamai apiana mulika framework eka this is the framework that we are going to go forward for next twenty years. So uh, whatever the things that we do, we have to reach these targets. So I think that's the main thing that we have to do to have the policy for next twenty years. So uh, talking about uh, uh, Actually, like having a policy or having a framework or having uh, like those things would not be enough if they aren't backed by the actions. So the next thing I would do is like making an action plan for all these policies that uh, I, I would like to, uh, I would be making. And then uh, if I come into the focus area, so like I mentioned, since the time doesn't permit to talk about all the areas, so I would like to choose the main differences or the major changes that I'm going to do in uh, education, IT, uh, with related to innovation and digitization and media. So um, let's talk about education first. Because uh, if we are to talk about changing anything, the first thing that we have to change is education. The education gana gatha ma mama khamati paasa ladhya apne indala ma yam kisi venasak si dukaran na. Mang hitra dana tapi adhya apne godak ihalata te kathiye na ma godak ratwal leka gatha mi thing. A A te kham na mut apne adhya apna krame tulam mama da kina lokum adu pa adu thamai apne school kharki ulam ma kya tulata. Ugana na na hai apni ko hamade finances manage karan, apni ko hamade business se kak karan, apni ko hamade job be kak karan, apni ko hamade paul ak manage karan. Eva ke ma sex education. Tere me deval hari ma adueng apni me kariki ulam me khatulat kia ni. Iting a deval mang hitna aniware ma kariki ulam me khatulat karan none. Eva ke ma me pili ma dav apni darwan nitrak denuat kalama di eva ke ma dema apni an denuat karan nat kramat vada pili vela khat. दाना तो होने ये वाके में कहते हैं अपने एजुकेशन सिस्टम में के मांगे ताने स्टैटिस्टिक्स कहते हैं हरी में खाना काट दाए खाए इतने मुख्यतः गुड़ाक देने का आवाद अंतिम एक हाई एजुकेशन ने एक अकेले अन्न लांका वे वारामला बने दासे दाहक वाके प्रमाणिया क्लाशत तुना क्वितर सिट करने ये लोग एग्जाम में के इतिंग व्हाई आर वी हैविंग दिस बैरियर लाइक हैविंग ओनली सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड गेटिंग सिलेक्टेड टू परस्यू द हाई एजुकेशन एंड व्हाई अदर थ्री हंड्रेड थाउजेंड ओवर द लाइक अदर पीपल हु ड्रॉप आउट एलियर फ्रॉम द a balanced decision, balanced uh, education system, the higher education system. So I would propose uh, having another set of universities uh, to get these people in, to get these students, uh, and to educate them properly uh, with uh, with better courses, not like not many courses related to art and uh, like politics or likewise, but because we have many graduates graduating from arts already, we need more science, technology, IT, those side of graduates. So that's something I would urge uh, in doing. Um, and also professional education is something that we can think of because there is a huge gap between what is in the industry and what are we taught through. 
Um, and then uh, coming back to the next point, innovation-driven nation. Um, so that's something I would like to do because um, I think in Sri Lanka, if we uh, hear like we hear a lot of innovations daily, we hear a lot of things. So in these days also, like we hear like. We call the Balashakti. Okay, good luck. They will be made out of salat. I think the innovations go home and up. Harriet Anagate Tarang and Niki and again. Again, up. Harry Pratipatia Kadanoni. I think Akata me. Good luck. Mamma the Kalatina. Some Harapi or Hackathon Seva. They will judge Karanda. The me. Someone is cool. Like again, a concepts got to. They were Harim abroad. They were good at creative with the head. I mean, so now the university like a hackathon, like a university like a competition, like a innovation competition, like a judge Karana youth. Eva gave Minisu Hitane Ramu Katakotuela. I think may innovation Kiana de Mang Hitana Api are day to day. Nikan Iganagana de Aka came up innovation Kiana de Mikarikulam at the Athleta Dan. No, I think Aka Hinda Api. Pasal mata me ini dalam, me apa ini lama itu daru antara me innovation kena deh purudu karan none, eva game, ek etani nawatane netu, ek kohomu deh diet arangyan, kohomu deh loko deh tan, how to think big and take their things forward. I think that's the main thing because as a nation we always limited to this island, we always think solutions to whatever the problems that exist in the island. So we have to think big and we have to build the next big thing that can take up the world. Yeah. Uh, so if I move back to the next point, the next thing I would do is the digital nation because I think that's the most interesting one for me. Because um, like as an IT person, as a person in IT, I have working with so many uh, organized government organizations, especially a lot of hospitals, especially a lot of government hospitals and Human Rights Commission, and of course like disaster management ministers. So I have worked with many organizations digitizing their processes. So the main thing that we find is although we digitize their processes, they still keep the manual system, they still keep the manual files. So we need to have proper low in place to have everything digital. So I think from the birth of the child, issuing the NIC number, uh, from that point we have to start. I think it's on development now, so which is a good thing. So, so we have to have a track of all our data, uh, uh, like uh, to even the health records, even the uh, immunity, uh, or like, I don't know, maybe insurance, or like whatever the records that we have, we have to keep them in one place. So that is what uh, have to uh, be digitized, and also new laws should be uh, enforced. Uh, and the next thing I would like to speak about is the um, uh, in uh, like innovation idea, I spoke about that. And the final thing would be the media. Uh, so I think um, without media support, without the proper media communication, we won't be able to do uh, anything. So if we hear to a lot of media channels today, everything we hear is like a lot of negativity. So let a lot of negativity goes to our mind. Like if you, if we hear to a morning show, they always talk about leaving this country and going for another country. So how can we as a nation come to the next stage? So I think that's, that's a bigger responsibility of media to plant in people the good things, the good things that they can do, maybe the innovations that they can do. And also, um, since I'm thinking of uh, implementing the whole innovation-driven nation, so maybe we can encourage them, maybe we can have songs to like build up the confidence of the people to like build, build this country a better place, and they can be accountable for the actions that they take. So I think media has to play a bigger role as well. So um, I think that concludes eight minutes, actually more than eight minutes. So with that note, I would like to end my speech, again, thanking um, uh, Melinda and Rasika for inviting me for this forum uh, for, from NextGen. And thanks a lot, everyone, for listening. It's very pleasure to talk. Thank you very much to Punani Ranasinghe for 
highlighting for us the importance of education, of innovation and digital technology if we need to drive Sri Lanka forward as a nation. And with that address, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the eight inspirational speeches for today. And I do hope you agree with me when I say that each of these pioneering women have helped to motivate us, to encourage us, educate us, as well as inspire us with their thought-provoking remarks. So we offer each of them our wholehearted gratitude for adding value to our gathering here this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please give each of these eight women a huge round of applause. Put your hands together for them. Before we wrap things up, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to present before you a very special song. Now, not all superheroes wear capes. Some superheroes wear saris, some wear dupattas, and some wear just what they want to. And our next song, which you will be seeing on screen, is a tribute to those superheroes in our lives. I lead Devana Adhire, Avasane Tamathin, May Visheshange Obavinuin, Sam Avirekma Urasalupalandin Nenat, Namut, Own Gen Bohodenik, Sari, Dupataho, Own to Avasha Own Amadak Aditi. May get the video over a Sialumavira variant, Upahari Akweva. විවිධ ජාති ආගම් කුලවලට අයත් අප සැම එක් විය යුතු කාලයයි දැන් එළඹ තිබෙන්නේ කාන්තා ශක්තිය ඉදිරියට පැමිණිය යුතු කාලයක් අත්වැල් බැඳගෙන ලොව නැගුමට කාන්තාවන් තව තවත් දායක විය යුතු කාලයක් ලෙස මේ කාලය අපට හඳුන්වන්නට පුළුවන් එහෙමනම් අප අද දවසේ මේ වැඩසටහනේ නිල වශයෙන් පළමු අදියර අවසන් කරන්නට අය බලාපොරොත්තු වන්නේ අප විශේෂයෙන් මේ මොහොතේදී මතක් කරන්නට කැමති නිදහස සඳහා වූ ෆෙඩරික් නෞමන් පදනම සහ නෙක්ස්ට් ජෙන් ශ්‍රී ලංකා එක්ව සංවිධානය කර ඇයි ලීඩ් දෙවන අදියරේදී අප තවත් ශ්‍රී ලාංකේ ශක්තිමත් කාන්තාවන් අට දෙනෙකු මුණ ගැසුණා ඔවුන්ගේ අත්දැකීම් බෙදා හදාගත්ත මේ රට පාලනය කරන්නට රට නව නායකත්වයකට රැගෙන යන්නට ඔවුන්ට අවස්ථාව ලබා දුන්නොත් ඔවුන් කොහොමද එය ක්‍රියා කරවන්නේ කියන කාරණය ඉතාමත්ම කෙටියෙන් මේ සියලුම කාන්තාවන් අපට ගෙන හැර දැක්වුවා ත්‍රිෂ්මා well, ladies and gentlemen, as we are almost coming to the end of this event, I lead chapter two. It's now time for us to hear from a few observations and remarks by the co-convener of Next Gen Sri Lanka. So to now share a few closing thoughts with us this evening, please welcome on stage, Melinda Rajapaksa. Hungry, no? So that is why Rasika put me at the end of the agenda, so no one will listen to me or no one will care much about my speech. Everyone is hungry. Uh, <coughs> but uh, Wolf Wagon, uh, I will do these remarks in uh, Singhala, and uh, I will, and other German friends here, and uh, I will do the translation over a beer after the event. I know anything over a beer will work with you. And uh, we have actually few diplomats here. And uh, Choi from uh, Korea, bachelor, bachelor, just for your information. And we have Rastaslav from the Russian embassy I saw somewhere, but married for two years now, just for your information. Api Samaning, next gen SLK events Karadi. Sapaning, Abime out the events to Nakitrakara, Api Kata Bedagan, no, I can echo Rasika Katakarno, Natta Mama Katakarno, Stuti Kata, we did a bit in Namasama and Katakara, and Abidina, Minas de Chopana das de Gagdarani, the Mepara, the Jinde Kata di Mankiva, and Mama Stuti, Mama Katava Karan Nankila. Rasiko make her international women dig in the Adat Katakara and Donikila, the Rasika Mulin Katakara. When the Animar and Rasika Rasika Kandure had yet a Katakara and Ingris, eh? Adu Singhal in Katakara. Samata Kanta in the Vindati. Other Ape Vadisata Hanata Pradana washing Api Deshapal Nakarana, other Deshapalaku Gudak Benunga, what Api Deshapal Nakarana, Sangvidanak, next gen is sale liquor. We with the Deshapal, Adahas, Sahamata Daranaya, Ekata in the Gena, Viva the Karnatanak, Samara de Valla Pekangavino, Samara de Valla Pekangavin Nemena, Era TV program maker at the High Kalina, Dolahavanaka, Rasika Mai. Ape Kanduru de Kanyo Jenekaram in Randuna, in the Rasika meet a Kalim Pavatu Katarama Utra in Dian in Ne, Moko the Yerapi Gondra Makarbuhinda. Other me Avasta at a Pamini, Ape Janama de Katu Amatuma, 
ඩල සලහ පෙරුම ඇමතුමනේ ඔබතුමාට බොහොම ස්තුතියි මගේ දේශපාලන කඳුර නියෝජනය කරන්නේ ඒ වගේම හර්ෂද සිල්වා පේ හිටපු නියෝජ්‍ය ඇමතුමා නෙක්ස්ට් ජෙනරේෂන් එකේ හැම ඉවෙන්ට් එකකටම එතුමා ඇවිල්ලා තියෙනවා ඒ වගේම මයන්ත දිසානායක මන්ත්‍රීතුමා අපේ හැම ඉවෙන්ට් එකකටම එනවා ඔබ දෙපලටත් ඉතාම ස්තුතියි මට වෙනස් දේශපාලන කඳුරක් නියෝජනය කරන්නේ ඒ වගේම අද මෙම අවස්ථාවට විචිත්‍රවත් කරේ මේ අවස්ථාවේ වැදගත්ම දේ මැද තිබෙන්නේ අපේ කාන්තාවන් අට දෙනෙක් කරපු කතාව මට මතක් වුණා මේ කතාට කරගෙන යද්දී මට අන්තිමට කතා කරන්න තියෙන්නේ කියලා මතක් වෙද්දී මම පහ වසරේ හය වසරේ ඉද්දී අපිට අර කතික තරම් වලට යන්න කලින් උගන්නනවනේ කොහොමද කතා පවත්වන්නේ කියලා මට අද වගේ මතකයි ඒකේ කිව්වත් දේවල් දෙකක් කරන්න හොඳ නැහැ කියලා හොඳ කතිකයෙක් වුණාම පළවෙනි එක කලින් කතා කරන කතිකය ඉතාම හොඳ කතිකයෙක් නම් ඊට පස්සේ කතා කරන්න යන්න එපා පළවෙනියට කතා කරන කතිකය කාන්තාවක් නම් මල්ලි ඒ තීර පස්සේ කතා කරන්න එපා මාත් පිරිම ස්කෝල් එකට ගියේ දැන් හිතන්න හොඳ කතික කාන්තාව අට දිනක් කතා කරාට පස්සේ කතා කරන්න හම්බෙන එක ඉතාම නරක අවස්ථාවක් මම මට එක මගේ වගකීමක් තමයි අපි අට දෙනා අපේ අපේ අද කාන්තා නායිකාවන් අට දෙනා කියපු කතාවල පොඩි සාරාංශයක් එකතු කරන එක අපි මේ පාර වෙනසක් කරා ගිය පාර අපේ කාන්තා නායිකාවන් දහ දෙනෙක් කතා කරා මේ පාර අපි අට දෙනා ඉන්නේ ඒ අට දෙනාගෙන් අපි හිතුවා හතර දෙනෙක් අපිට උඩ පරම්පරාවේ හතර දෙනෙක් අනිත් හතර දෙනා අපේ පරම්පරාවේ හතර දෙනෙක් එහෙම තමයි අපි ඒ අට දෙනාම අපේ පරම්පරාවේ වගේ තමයි පේන්නේ නමුත් හතර දෙනෙක් උඩ පරම්පරාවේ හතර දෙනෙක් අපේ පරම්පරාවේ අපේ මේ කතා අටේ පොඩි සාරාංශයක් මං කිව්වොත් මේ හැමෝම එක දෙයක් ගැන කතා කරා ඒ තමයි රිෆෝම්ස් ගැන ඉතාම ඉක්මනින් අපිට පොදු සමාජයක් විදියට දේශපාලකයෝ විදිහට ආණ්ඩුවක් විදිහට රිෆෝම්ස් කරන්න වෙලා තියෙනවා ඉතාම ඉක්මනින් ඒ වගේම මේ අර්බුදය අවස්ථාවක් කරගත යුතුව තිබෙනවා මේ වෙනස්කම් අලුත් නීති හඳුන්වා දෙන්න අලුත් ප්‍රතිපත්ති හඳුන්වා දෙන්න අලුත් මාර්ගයකට මේ රටේ චින්තනය ගෙන යන්න අවශ්‍ය කරන වෙනස්කම් ඉතාම ඉක්මනින් සිදු කිරීමට ඒක මේ අට දෙනාගෙම කතාව ඉතා පැහැදිලිවම පෙනිච්ච කරුණක් ඊළඟට මේ අට දෙනාම වගේ කතා කරා මේ රටේ අධ්‍යාපන ක්‍රමයේ තිබ්බ අවුල ගැන දල සමතුමත් අධ්‍යාපන මැතිවර වෙලා හිටියා මේ ආණ්ඩුවේ මේ රටේ අධ්‍යාපන ක්‍රමයේ තිබෙන අවුල ගැන පරම්පරා දෙකේම කතිකයෝ කතා කිරීමෙන් පෙනී යන්නේ අද අවසාන පරම්පරාවට එනකනුත් මේ රටේ අධ්‍යාපන ක්‍රමයේ ගැටලුවක් තිබෙන බව අපි සියලුම දෙනාට පේන බව එතනින් එහාට ගිහිල්ලා ඉතාම ඩීටේල් දේවල් පවා කතා කරා උදාහරණයක් විදියට තාමත් ලංකාවේ ගෑන් ළමයිනු පිරිමි ළමයිනු වෙනස් විගෙන ගන්නේ මමත් පිරිමි ස්කෝල් එකට ගිය කෙනෙක් විදියට අත උස්සල එකට එකඟ වෙනවා මේක ඉතා ඉක්මනින් වෙනස් කරන්න ඕනේ කියන එක ගැන ඒ මදුර මම හොස්ටල් එකෙත් හිටියේ හිතන්න පුළුවන් නැතුවට තිබ්බ මාරුව නමුත් මේ වගේ චූටි වෙනස්කම් දක්වා අපේ අධ්‍යාපන ක්‍රමයේ වෙනස් කළ යුතු තැන් බොහොමයක් තියෙන බත්තිය අපි සියලු දෙනාම එකඟ වුණා ඊළඟට අපේ කතිකෝ ගොඩක් දුර ගිහිල්ලා කතා කරා ඒ කියන්නේ දේශපාලනික වශයෙන් අපි දිගින් දිගටම කතා කරපු කාරණා ඒ කියන්නේ මේ ඡන්ද වලට මුදල් වියදම් කරන එකට සීමාවක් පනවන්නේ නැද්ද මේ මැතිවරණ ක්‍රමයේ වෙනසක් කරන්නේ නැද්ද කාන්තාවන්ට දේශපාලනයට සහභාගී වීම සඳහා අවශ්‍ය කරන පරිසරය හදන්නේ නැද්ද ඒවත් අපි නෙක්ස්ට් ජෙන් එස් එල් එක විදියට පහුගිය අවුරුදු කීපය පුරාම දිගින් දිගටම කතා කරන විවාද වලට සම්බන්ධ වෙන පක්ෂ බේදයකින් තොරව මමත් රසි කළා ලිහිනිල අපි සියලුම දෙනා විවිධ දේශපාලන මත අදහස් දරණය එකට එකඟ වෙච්ච කාරණා කීපයක් ඒ නිසා ඒවා වෙනස් කිරීම සඳහා දේශපාලනයේ පොදු සමාජයේ සහයෝගය ලැබෙයි කියලා අපි විශ්වාස කරනවා ඊළඟට අපේ කතිකයන් තවත් වැදගත් දෙයක් කතා කරා ඒ තමා මේ අපේ රටේ තිබෙන සංස්කෘතික ආගමික ජනමාර්ගික වෙනස ඒ වෙනස අභිබවා ගිහිල්ලා අපි සමාජයක් විදියට නැවත එකට එකතු වීමේ අවශ්‍යතාවය යුද්ධය ඉවර වෙලා අවුරුදු 10ක් හැබැයි ඊට පස්සෙත් සෞන්දර්ය කතා කරා වගේ තාමත් අපේ අධ්‍යාපන ක්‍රමයේ මං ගියේ හොඳ සිංහල බෞද්ධ ඉස්කෝලෙ එකට ඒක අපි පැත්තකට කරලා සිංහල බෞද්ධකම ගැන විතරයි යුගන්නලා තියෙන්නේ ඒ හින්දා මගේ ජීවිතේ තාමත් මට තිබෙන එකම අවබෝධය සිංහල බෞද්ධ ආගම සහ ඒක කොයි තරම් ශ්‍රේෂ්ඨද කියන එක ගැන විතරයි මේ සේරම එකට එකතු කරන්නේ කොහොමද මේ සේරම එක සංවාද භූමියකට ගේන්නේ කොහොමද කියන එක පිළිබඳවත් අපි අවධානය යොමු කරා ඊළඟට අපි ඉනෝවේෂන් ගැන අලුත් දේවල් හොයන එක ගැන අන්තිමට පූලණී කතා කරා ගරු ඇමතුමනි අද උදේ මාව ඇවිල්ලා හම්බුණා නවෝත්පාදන පිළිබඳ කොමිෂන් එකේ කොමිෂන් අයි තව දෙන්නෙකුයි එතකොට ඒ තරඟේ ගිය පාර දිනලා තියෙනවා රම්පදක්කන් 40ක් නව නවෝත්පාදන කරලා තියෙනවා රම්පදක්කන් 40ක් ඒ 40න් එක්කෙනෙකුටවත් පත්තරේකවත් ඉන්ටර්වියු එකක් හම්බෙලා නැහැ 
पत्थर एक बात इन सातवें या मध्यमा वह हम बिंदा आवे तो वो नवोत पादन संस्कृति ये थी ना आउल विया बुला एक इम्पेयर ने थी कोहमद अभी आलू तर अभी राठाक कोई दिया था समाज या कोई दिया था कोहमद आलू देवल निष्पादने के रूप में निहल टे यान ने मेन में कारण वाले टामतरों ताऊ गोड़ात कारण खताकरा इताम आमारुई � देश पालन चर्रे आवश्यक रटा हो पीली बंदवे पक्षे देश पालन क्रम में पीली बंदवे फोड़ुए थी बिना एक अट सिंगलिंग किया ने अपसेट टक किया ला फोड़ुए थी बिना अपसेट टक में तो नीता पहेदीलो पे हुना इन्हीं सा एक वहाँ वहाँ निवर्दी किरी का नीमे समाज आवश्यकता आ गया अभी हम उठ मत किया ला किया � the foundation, Fedrick Naufman Foundation, for making this possible. Uh, I mean, this would have not been possible in such a grand scale if you didn't support Samantha and the entire other staff. This is the second time we are doing. And I like three things about Fedrick Naufman Foundation, three things. I will start from the third one. The third one, you always support Next Gen SL generously. Thank you very much for that. We have done some great work together. That is the third one. The second one, I like you because you do some great work. Apart from working with Next Gen SL, you do some other great work here and all around the world. Uh, we appreciate that too. And the first one, you are the only donor I have ever met after an event who sponsor beer. That's the first reason. So on your left, you have beer. On your right, you have dinner. Uh, in between, you can have a chat. The, we are not going to close down the show. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. Good night. Enjoy. Stutio Budumata, Milinda Raja Paksha, Next Gen Sri Lanka, Summer Kanda Wumkaru, Emanam, Nila Vashen Palamo with Adira of San Karanata Episodanama, Suha the Hamuata of Basilu, the Nata Mara, the Nakarnakaman, Mevara Jati and Tratema Viti Bene, Break the Bias, Pakshapati, Tribidimu, Upper Kanta Avata Nisi Gauraway, Nisitana Niranta and Labadim, Kanta Shakti, Idiriatam Raganam. Ladies and gentlemen, as we almost come to the end of our event here this evening, we do hope that all of the addresses spoken from stage today have inspired you with their great insights on what lies in store when we can all work together towards a world that is equitable and inclusive, especially towards women. And I do hope that this event has also encouraged all of the wonderful women who have joined us here this evening to continue strong on your journey towards progress and possibility, as well as continue to push those boundaries in your pursuit towards excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, let's remember that today and every day, we need to continue to take action towards equality because only together we can help to break the bias. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, we now draw the curtains to I Lead Chapter 2, organized by Next Gen Sri Lanka in partnership with the Friedrich Nauman Foundation for Freedom. It's our pleasure to invite you for cocktails and fellowship right now. And we'd also like to invite our eight women speakers to please join us on stage right after the event is over for a group photograph. On that note, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your participation here this evening, and I wish you a pleasant day ahead. Thank you. Thank you.